Hi guys, Natasha here. Today we have with us a very special guest. Her name is Twinkle Khanna. Twinkle Khanna is an Indian author, a newspaper columnist, a film producer, an interior designer, and she's also a former film actor. She's also one of the top-selling female authors of all books published in 2018. It's lovely to have her here with us, and we have a lot of questions to ask her. So let's get started. Twinkle, what are some of the pressures that come with being funny and entertaining? I think uh, in the beginning I would um, get called onto stage and they would say well here's Mrs Funny Bones and she's going to make you laugh for an hour and I just wanted a hole to open somewhere and I could just sink into that but uh, with time I think I've gotten used to it and pressure is also something that uh, I mean at, right now when we're sitting we have 14 pounds of atmospheric pressure on us we don't feel it because our bodies are used to it so I think now I'm getting used to being Mrs Funny Bones <laughs> So you're dealing with the pressure in the most comfortable way you can? Mm, yeah, my body's adapting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Tell us three unknown facts about you. I am actually an introvert. I eat soya chutneys every day. And I killed a spider in my car on my way here, sorry. If you could change your name, what would you change it to? Considering that I was born with a name like Twinkle and then when I had a chance I called myself Mrs. Funny Bones, I don't think I should be allowed to name anything, not even dogs. So I'm not going to even try now. A third time, uh, you know, I'm going to leave it to fate. So you've made peace with your name. <laughs> For a long time I didn't and then I read uh, Interpreter of Maladies and in that there's a character who she has a very fancy Bengali name but her pet name is Twinkle and she really uses it all the time and she seems very popular and everyone likes her so I said well if she can you know be happy with her name then why can't I so that's uh, pretty much my journey with my name what according to you is the sexiest word in the English language uh, the English language unfortunately is like the English weather it's all gray and dull so I don't think there's anything sexy in English for that you do have to use French Okay, what's your favorite French word then? Um, I actually have a list of words that you say in French before... No, I can't say it on camera. Okay, no, I'm sorry. I can't use those words. <laughs> okay, no worries. Which is the first book that made you cry? I honestly don't remember. I don't remember the first book, but the last movie that made me cry was Coco. And when Coco has his guitar, if anybody's seen it, and he keeps uh, singing to his grandmother, remember me, I just sobbed and sobbed. I'm really a sap inside somewhere. <laughs> Do you cry a lot when you watch movies, or was it that particular movie? That made I only cry when I watch movies. I rarely cry in real life. Does a big ego help or hurt writers? Like everything else, it's not the size that matters, it's what you do with it. So an ego actually has to be malleable. It has to expand when you are writing so that what you want to convey, um, you completely are convinced that it's worth conveying. And uh, when you are with your editor and when your manuscript goes for editing, it has to roll over and play dead. So yeah, it has to constantly change. What are some common traps for aspiring writers? First of all, I would say that uh, there is no such thing as writer's block. And it is a matter of just sitting there at that desk and typing away. And 1500 words later, the writer's block disappears. The other thing is we uh, admire so many writers and we have a ten tendency to emulate them. And I think that is a big trap. You have to write just the way you can, good, bad, ugly, but the only way that is unique to you. Does writing energize you or exhaust you? This exhausts me. People exhaust me. <laughs> writing, I find uh, very, very calming. I find it, well, today we've heard of, uh, what was it? Cardiac coherence, which is another word that they've coined for pranayam, right? For me, writing is a bit like pranayam. It's, you're in your mind, but you're still at a distance, and I find it um, actually meditative. What was an early experience where you learned that language had power? Well, a couple of times, I think, um, when I was in school and I was in this elocution co competition, and I think it was 
is this a dagger I see before me and I'm standing and saying, or I was saying these words and I really remember that, you know, that feeling of being able to convey so much just through words. Do you read book reviews? How do you deal with bad ones if you have any? I read all book reviews. And uh, unfortunately for most of us, we dismiss all our good reviews and the bad ones keep ringing in your head like this alarm bell. Um, but I think that it's important to look at bad reviews, to examine them, because that's the only way you learn and you'll be able to take another leap, which is what you need to keep doing. So we have the last question now. What's your favorite underappreciated novel? Well, uh, from the greats, I would say that uh, Fitzgerald's Great Gatsby is, uh, you know, the ultimate favorite. It's on every list, but Tender is the Night is my favorite. No, I think most people don't read it because it's very, very thick and people don't seem to like reading thick books. But I think it has a lot more nuance and uh, I think that it is uh, absolutely underappreciated. So please go ahead and read that book. It's yeah. Twinkle's suggestion. And it was lovely having you here with us. We had a lot of fun talking to you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much.